Sky Strikers have won the YCS in Hartford, Connecticut. It literally just wrapped up as I'm making this video. So let's talk about everything that happened at Hartford as well as the craziness that was YCS Hartford. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Destroy the ever-loving crap out of that subscribe button and the like and the bell and all of that other stuff so we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. Guys, I literally just got done watching the finals of YCS Hartford between Sky Striker and Branded Despia. I also want to apologize in case you hear any rain outside my damn window because, yeah, it's, it's thunder and lightning like crazy. So I'm trying to talk as loud as I can so that you just don't hear all the damn rain. So anyway, Sky Striker won the YCS in Hartford, Connecticut, and it was text upon text upon text text upon spicy text. For one thing, Poe, the person playing uh, Sky Striker, all the way from Australia. Meanwhile, the branded Despia player, James, was all the way from Ontario, Canada, which is absolutely crazy in of itself that an American YCS was won by someone not even from America. So anyway, I thought that that was something interesting. The YCS was really interesting, though, in the fact that there was a lot of text at this event. Specifically, in Sky Striker, Poe was playing three copies of Demise of the Land, three copies of Trap Trick, three copies of D-Barrier, and three copies of Mystic Mine. And he went first in game one. Very, very interesting text in a Sky Striker deck as a whole, along with still playing Infinite Impermanence. Now, something else that was interesting in general was that a lot of decks, whether it be 60 card Brandon Eldritch, whether it was Sky Striker, a lot of decks were throwing in a small package engine of three copies of Demise of the Land and three copies of Mystic Mine. A lot of decks are playing Mystic Mine now all of a sudden. And really, who can blame them? When you have a card like Mystic Mine that didn't get hit on the balance, and as I've talked about before, needs to be banned because it just inherently stops the opponent from playing the game, especially if they don't have an out, it's a very toxic card. Let's just be honest here. On top of that, what you have to keep in mind too, that something that you can do with Demise of the Land is that if you have a monster on your board and the opponent has one monster, or they end up special summoning a second time and they commit to two, you can activate the Demise of the Land, get out Mystic Mine, and it ends up putting, I would say, the opponent who has to deal with the Mystic Mine in a very difficult predicament, right? Because the opponent knows that if both players have one monster, if you attack into your opponent's one monster, well, the Mystic Mine is just going to kick on and it's going to only affect you. If you've got two monsters, then you have to simplify your board down to either one monster or no monsters so that you can deal with the Mystic Mine. And if you do simplify it down to one and you want to get rid of the Mystic Mine, then you just have to pass turn and leave the monster on the board. That's what happened in the finals. Uh, Poe had a Shizuku on the board and James had a Despian Quertus on the field and he ended up having to pass turn so that the, mess, the Mystic Mine would pop itself. So a lot of Mystic Minds at this particular event. Maybe we'll see that change, maybe we won't, but it's something to keep in mind going forward into events. And Sword Soul, which had a huge representation, ended up not winning the event. The finals were two totally different decks, especially in the form of Sky Striker, a deck that some were considering to be rogue to tier two, depending on who you ask, maybe tier 1.5. And Sword Soul didn't win the event. And I think really that comes down to the fact that it's simply because people have figured out Sword Soul. You know how to beat the deck. You know how to side deck against it. If the Sword Soul player opens up booty booty butt cheeks and only has the Moyi and they try to activate the effect and you have the Imperm of the Veiler, what have you, they're just going to lose. And that's just what happens. I mean, I watched James just destroy a Sword Soul player in the semifinals because the guy just couldn't do anything. He went first in game one and just passed and the branded Despia deck ended up just OTKing him. Game two, he tried to summon Moyi and he had the Imperm and he just lost from there. So it happens. And it goes to show that no matter whether you go to your locals, regional, all the way up to the semifinals of a YCS, anybody can brick. It can happen to any deck. I don't care how consistent your deck is. You, every deck bricks. It's just luck of the draw. So other than that, there did not seem to be any cheating, at least that I saw. I've seen a lot of people online talking about how a lot of people's stuff has gotten stolen. And I feel like that really comes down to that it happens at every event, hopefully not every event, but you need to watch your shit. If you've never heard the stuff speech at an event before, it's basically, hey, you like your stuff, we like your stuff, we like your stuff more than you like your stuff. 
So watch your stuff. Don't get it stolen. If you see something that's not yours and it's on the ground, on a table, whatever, raise your hand, call for a judge. Judge will take it, put it in the lost and found. Don't get your stuff stolen. Watch your shit, please. I do not want you to get your stuff stolen. Uh, I have luckily never had any of my stuff stolen. I watch my shit like a hawk. I don't leave my bag with a fucking friend. I don't care if it's my best friend of 20 years or, you know, someone I just met. I don't leave my shit laying around. I carry my backpack sometimes on my front or on my back. You know, just only take the necessities. Don't take your $10,000 binder. Don't take your fully starlighted out, ultimate rare, 420 blaze it, mystic mine, rarity deck that's like five grand like just just don't do that take only the necessities don't get your shit stolen so anyways other than that the event seemed to run pretty smoothly i didn't really see anything that popped up let me know in the down in the comments what you think or some stories that you had from the event if you went to the event is there something that i missed that i'm just not talking about i think that overall it was very interesting to see what decks did well and what didn't oh and i also want to mention adventure punk and Therion's did have a good showing, a good number of showing, I should say, in the top 32. But as we saw, they didn't make it to the finals. Does that mean the decks are bad? No. It just means that there were other decks that were present in the top 32 that were just able to beat them out. It happens. It, that doesn't mean that it's a bad deck. I would say, honestly, after they're showing at this event, I would say that Therion and Adventure Punk are very solid tier 1.5 decks. And your tier 1 decks are still branded and sword soul and maybe Sky Striker, maybe tier 1.5. I think the better that the, the pilot of the deck is, the better that Sky Striker as a whole is. So anyways, guys, let me know what you think all in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.